Hey, hey, everybody, we're back in the same in 80. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we're, we're, woods. we're, uh, oh, okay. we're up against the monster barrage. The monster uh, barrage. One of the, one of the easier levels, yeah, despite definitely, being screen 80. Definitely reminiscent of screen 20 something. <laughs> uh, so I wonder a little bit if some of those easy levels are there by design. They'll give you like a really horrible, like all diagonals level. And then they just let you kick Wario's ass for a minute. So you don't lose interest in I the guess game. The level prior to this one was a little unpleasant. Brutal. So Yeah. Yeah. This one that was stressful to watch, the yeah. one before this. Uh, yeah, so I got, a, I got a question for you guys. I love Mario. I love the Mario universe. Mm -hmm. I love the characters. But is it me, or are they just... They, they kind of suck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like the concept? Like the, the concept, like, I mean, I'm not, I, look, <laughs> I just find, like, it's sometimes, like, I love Bowser, uh -huh. but I find it sometimes hard to get excited about Bowser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bowser's I'm on my board favorite. here. They have, uh, their world is, uh, a little lame. It's, <laughs> look, is it a little lame? Like... I, I, I would uh, would argue that uh, Miyamoto Shigeru is not an excellent storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, many, many talents, that guy. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I, I mean, the man... Uh, he... This, Mario was, was not really, I think, ever meant to be a grand RPG of any sort. It was In not... A... Yeah. <laughs> Miyamoto, I think his passion is getting the player to tell their own story. That's yeah. what he did with the original Zelda and uh, what he tried to get back to with the latest Zelda. Yeah. Um, which was quite well, rece well received, I think. Yeah. Oh, well, sure. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I would argue that it's probably because uh, he is not a master storyteller himself. Right? Like, yeah. I... Like, okay. The... I, I like okay. Why are why are we destroying blocks? Um, because we need stuff. Uh, let's contextualize the blocks a little bit more. Why do we, why are there happy faces on the blocks? Because everybody uh, this is might a be, block. I might be fucked. I might be. No, you're oh, good. You're good. Okay. You got this. You got this. Because it is a world of people who have been transformed into blocks. We didn't need that piece of lore. Uh, that piece of no. lore does nothing to advance the plot. They just had put happy faces on on blocks, and it's... so that's the whole thing. Uh, it's a bit metachlorian and, to and, uh, explain it. And plants and yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a bit metachlorian, yes. Um, yeah. uh, the, he is a fantastic designer. Uh, he's not a fantastic narrative designer. Um, and also, I don't think anyone ever told him, no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, like, most of the time, it's pretty great. It's just, I actually think that the more they dig into the lore of uh, the Mushroom Kingdom, the the less uh, the, interesting it The gets. worse it gets? Like, yeah! I mean, it's not even that it's disinteresting. It's very no. interesting. It's just yes. fucking horrifying. It's a <laughs> There's, yeah, yeah. There are so many horrible things going on, and like, uh, I, I mean, I hate to continue to beat a dead horse, but if the best case scenario about Princess Peach there is that, is that she stupid? has no sexual education, <laughs> that's not a that good. Is, that's not a mark in her favor, you know. That's as good as it could be for her. That is the yeah, best that, possible uh, case. With the whole, you know, I'm your mommy thing from multiple episodes ago. Oh my god. This is getting way <laughs> getting, harder. Yeah. Way harder. It's, uh, I, I wondered if I'd be able to carry out a conversation. I can sometimes. Uh, yeah. Because well, right now it's fine. Don't worry about it. Like I like like we said, like if you're gonna if you need to concentrate, you go. I'll see you on the other side. Yeah. 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 These two bombs to blow up assholes are way too much. They they can be a blessing and a curse. I, I mentioned a while ago that they could deal with that. So the nice thing is that if I wait for those guys to stop flashing, I now have a much bigger combo than I would have otherwise. That's like a whole row. Right, uh, right. If sure. they had just blown if up, if you I ever have... get another red bomb, if I ever do, yeah, I probably I might not even before uh, Wario comes back because he's going to be here in just a second. Yeah. To uh, 
activate the Elder Thwomp. <laughs> <Activate> the Elder <laughs> Thwomp. And yeah, kick. So you had, like that, that's... you had that whole row red combo, but it couldn't it couldn't fire because yep. you only had one bomb. And here we go. This is and and that bomb just went. It just <laughs> yeah. That was just like yeah. Uh, like you've got these this guys is... blinking, but they're not gone yet. No, no, and they won't be because there was no other red bomb. Yep. It's like they you have be, to wait until uh, there are two be on screen before using them. Here we go. Oh, nice. Like so. Oh, now you have the diamond. diamond, so so fuck everything. And the everybody. diamond can uh, can disobey the rules. Yeah. Uh, of the other bombs, I'm actually not going to use a bomb to. Uh... Oh wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that one. Uh, I can't that take credit for that. But... Uh, see that that fucker, Birdo, is dropping red bombs. <laughs> we were winning, Birdo. <laughs> I'm helping you out. Helping. I always blame Birdo. It's actually Wanda. Birdo is uh actually doing nothing, nothing yeah. to help. Birdo, Birdo okay. is Birdo. nothing but a timekeeper here. Like I I know Birdo. I know Wario's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I am terribly aware that Wario's going to be back. <laughs> Birdo's stance, I believe, is yeah, but you don't know exactly when. That's why I'm here. I mean, okay, so you know, I didn't want to be the guy who was like, yeah, is this bad? Like, I don't want to be that edgy fucking dickhole who's like, oh, this, I think the Mario characters actually suck. I don't want to be that guy because you be know, it's guy. a highly successful thing, and I'm I'm glad it exists, but. I'm just, uh... Uh, Waluigi has, uh, achieved internet popularity recently. Uh, Waluigi's dog shit. Dog shit character. <laughs> yes! Uh, totally! His, his, uh, so, Wario, his name is, uh, is Wario. He's the, he's the anti-Mario. Uh, W is an upside-down M. Yep. Uh, he's got, like, sort of a different color. It, like, there's lots to, lots to speak for him. He's, a, Wario is a stupid character, too, but there's a lot of things. Um, Waluigi's... Uh, emblem is an upside down L. Yep. <laughs> but his his name starts with a uh, a W to match Wario. Well, but he's not called like. Uh, 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 allow me oh, to uh, uh, allow me to, to to make a point on this one actually. So uh, one, we can't be sure that that's a W. That could be an upside down M. And also, Waruigi uh, is a much better pun in Japanese. Is it? Because Warui means bad. Oh. <laughs> oh, so his name kind of means bad Luigi. Well, it, it it's bad G, I guess, honestly, ultimately, but yes. So uh, it, it includes uh, the word for evil, essentially, or the word for badness uh, within right, okay. his name. So, yeah, I get it, especially from a native English speaker's uh, perspective, like Wa Waluigi makes no sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, I'm I am 99% sure that uh, after Wario became a character, and they're like, well, we need an evil Luigi, and so they're like, okay, um, I don't know that we can turn an L upside down and have it be anything other than a seven. What about the Wa thing? Oh, Luigi with Wa in front of it becomes Waruigi. Let's do it. You that know? sounds awesome. <laughs> they, right. they they did uh, they did what they could with what they had. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it must have it was most likely since it was Japan, uh, like you know, series of five hour meetings. But um, you know, uh, there's a series of games that I adore called Wario and Luigi uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Yep, um, heard of it. Never played it. They're they're so they're so good. They're so charming. Uh, they're really fun. Um. So what you're telling us combo... is that that's what we're doing on, on Wednesday next. Oh, I would totally play that game with you guys. <laughs> uh, we'll do it. It's done. So there's a <laughs> motion. There's passed. a move in that game called uh, Knockback Bros. Okay. Uh, knockback Bros. It's uh, Luigi smashes Wario with a hammer. Smashes Mario with a hammer, and uh, he hits him like a croquet ball. <laughs> and Mario flies spinning towards the enemy and bounces off. You get an upgrade for it at later levels where there is no limit to the number of times that you can do it. You can do it as long as you don't fuck up the combo. Right. If you keep the button sequence going. So it's sort and of like Mario RPG, Super Mario RPG in that respect. 
Uh, very much so. And one of my greatest achievements in video games is I beat the last boss with one use of knockback bros. It took like, <laughs> it took like 10 minutes of just bouncing back and forth. Because that thing has an incredible amount of hit points. Uh... Anyway, I have always thought they should do a Wario and Waluigi Superstar Saga. Where you're just playing, like, horrible anti-heroes. Like, just <laughs> robbing people. and But, like, it's just... They're going on a shittier adventure where they, like, break out of prison. And... Is there, like... Is there, like, canon of them being even, like, related or even friends? Uh, the intro of Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that, that, that cutscene is maybe the greatest Wario Waluigi sequence that I know of. It's them running around, like, fucking with people and trying to cheat and pissing off Bowser. and <laughs> That's the only instance I know of where they actually hang out. That is um, another thing. Like, Wa Wario and, and, and Waluigi um, are, are antagonists to everybody. Yes, <laughs> true. They hate everyone equally. There's no, and they don't. Uh, it's been a while since War Wario was a serious villain, too. He hasn't really tried to like destroy the world or anything. Yeah. Well, no. Wario's whole deal is just fucking with you. I don't think that he has any well laid out plans for world domination. Like this was his first go to, right? So yeah. <laughs> obviously, he is not a mastermind. But... Yeah, like, to he had a plan to conquer the world, and Toad beat him, and he's like, I, maybe I'm not meant to rule maybe the world. Maybe this isn't my bag. <laughs> I think I got too greedy here, trying to make this uh, combo happen. I might be able to pull it off, but... Just... I think you can do it. I know you can. Yeah! yeah there we go. <laughs> Uh, and I actually really like what they've done with Luigi over the last few years, where they turned him into an absolute crackhead weirdo. <laughs> uh, I, I, I Luigi... like crackhead weirdo Luigi more than I like abject coward Luigi, that's for sure. Yes, yeah. The, uh, the Luigi in uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga is incredible. He's a silent protagonist like Mario. He doesn't say anything, and nobody knows who he is. <laughs> None of the other, everyone recognizes Mario. It's like, great, it's Mario! and whoever this guy is and it never gets better for him like the ship never comes for Luigi <laughs> uh, there's like one scene where uh, Luigi has to do something without Mario and it's so sad like Mario's kidnapped for this while and Luigi is such a coward without Mario that his movement speed is halved and he, <laughs> he refuses to jump he's just almost crawling with fear for this whole sequence and he just won't uh you, you've got to get through, like, fights, like, and your main antagonist is Luigi's cowardice, and it's, like, <laughs> it's so good. Uh, uh, the first one is probably my favorite, but the other ones uh, are also worth playing. Um, we should do it. We'll, we'll do it. Yep. for uh, After we're done Warriors Woods, happen. the boss Ga fight section, we'll, we'll start on that. Uh, Game Boy Advance is pretty... Uh, it's pretty retro these days, I guess. So that yeah. Yeah, man. probably counts. Absolutely, it is. Retro is what we say it is for this channel. Honestly, like we played, yeah, we played true. Fallout Four, and we were still calling ourselves retro. So, sort of, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we 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 had we justified it by having Fallout Four being a a more recent ep like entry into a venerable video game series that most certainly was retro at one point, but. Yeah, like, you know, that's only defensible because we say it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is a pretty long game. Um, and it's, it's not one that I am by any means an expert at. Uh, there are people who are crazy good at that game, at, at like, uh, sort of metagaming it. I just kind of... Uh, I got very good at knockback bros, and I used it to save the world. Right. Uh, viewers of Level Zero NPCs has been around for a while. Uh, educate Alex as to uh, the expectation of quality uh, after having watched <laughs> Eva. <laughs> low, 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 low to none, I guess. Yeah, you guys did warn me about that. Yes. So. Uh, it's it's not a deliberately hard game though no. Mario and Luigi. Um, I imagine that Evo probably... isn't a deliberately hard game either. I completely neglected to use a very important core mechanic of the game for its entirety. <laughs> <laughs> because it happens it, with us. Because it wasn't specifically called out during the tutorial of the game. And I uh, I always cheat when I play. Yep. So you know, that's yeah. just what we do here. 
Uh, the two games I've always felt Nintendo should make are Wario and Waluigi Superstar Saga, where it's like a horrible parody of Mario and Luigi's lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and a game uh, where Captain Falcon is actually a bounty hunter. <laughs> uh, I, I think they should make like a Grand Theft Auto-esque game where you, you like street race as a subcomponent of it, but mostly you are Captain Falcon using his curious uh, fire superpowers to fight crime. <laughs> That's true, right? Like, As like a street level hero. What uh, does that add to the F-Zero lore? That he's a uh, fire wielding uh, <laughs> bounty hunter. Because you never get to do that, right? There's so much background to those characters, and they're these awesome, like, comic book hero-looking dudes. Uh, and all they really do is race, and I'm not against that. Um, F-Zero GX was uh, nearly impossible. Uh, it's a <laughs> terribly hard game. There's a there's a lot of, of weird side lore to um, to F-Zero that, that makes very little sense, honestly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was <laughs> relieved that that uh, orange, orange <laughs> thing fell at the right time. It's okay, we we understand uh, celebration. I love how you uh, celebration needs to happen. I love how you uh, helped it along because so, you didn't want to give them the credit. <laughs> <laughs> it just would have fallen in there, but you're like, no, this is going in. This is me. I'm doing this. <laughs> it's on its way to the basket. I am still going yeah, to dunk. I'm just gonna help it. <laughs> yeah, I'm here to win. You're here to watch. <laughs> Um, yeah, but oh, that I, was like two episodes ago. That's a uh, that's a reference yeah. to a thing that was said earlier. That's fine. <laughs> We're good. Um, I'm, I'm not just an asshole. That was an asshole <laughs> thing that I said in, in just watch. a minute ago. That was only last episode because that last episode was insanely long. I love how Alex, being new here, is still concerned. <laughs> I just I really want people to like me. Like, it's not my main thing. It's not my you know. Are you kidding? You're you're better at video games. You're uh, funnier than any of us. Yeah, you don't and belong here. You know here, more honestly, shit than Luke. Like, yeah. You're like a super. Uh, you're like a super us. <laughs> we don't oh, even thanks. need to be here. Thanks, guys. Luke and I, we're just gonna go. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, welcome everyone. to uh, <laughs> Alex plays video games, formerly known as uh, oh. Level Zero MTCs. Oh wait, it's been a lonely experience. Uh, <laughs> I don't know though. You just called it Alex plays video games. I don't know. If I can... <laughs> That's maybe the worst name ever. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's one of the many mistakes here at Alex Plays Video Games was the name. The other one was the departure of the co-hosts. Uh... Man, he gets one show, and all of a sudden... <laughs> Co-host is a strong word for what I am. I haven't been here twice. Uh, well, we'd like you to join us more. Yeah, more I often. Wario and uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga would be great. It's got dialogue for Matt to read. It's all text based. Oh, sweet. Um, do I get to do my Nintendo voices? I imagine you do. Uh, you probably could. The Wario uh, Superstar Saga takes place in the uh, in sort of the Bean Kingdom. The Bean Kingdom. The Bean Kingdom. It's not in the Mushroom Kingdom. It's in the neighboring Bean Kingdom. <laughs> Where oh, Mario and Luigi are totally unknown, and they just call you red and green. <laughs> nice. Uh, the humor in it is is exquisite. Uh, uh, is, it, is it like uh, Paper Mario levels of humor? It's, yeah, it's, it's very much in the same vein as that. Also, Paper Mario, like, is that, are they separate beings? Paper Mario, to, to Mario, Mario and Luigi, like Paper Mario and Paper Luigi, they're like different people, right? So let's I think it's let's just uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, not try to understand the logic of Miyamoto. <laughs> yeah, all right. It's all right, it is a fair. road that going down leads only to sorrow. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm fairly certain that they're separate individuals. I got the impression that uh, the paper aesthetic is just used as both a mechanic and a framing device. Yeah. But everyone's referred to as sort of just Mario and, and That's Luigi. That's true. Yep. Um, it's kind of like how it had that Kirby game where everything was felt. Yeah, the Yoshi one where everyone's yarn. Yeah. Okay, that's yarn. fair. There you it's go. a thing. Yoshi every games. every Nintendo hero, hero gets one after a while. Uh, it's basically Nintendo being Pixar, right? Like, they, they come up with one uh, technological advancement, and so they have to make a video game around it, right? Like Yeah. Like how Pixar is like, oh, we have this weird new hair shader. Let's make Brave. 
<laughs> we need to. We need a protagonist that has like alarmingly Crazy curly hair. hair. <laughs> Uh, that is actually kind of Pixar getting back to its roots in that they were originally pioneers of technology more so than animation. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I totally respect it. But, like, yeah, uh, after, after going to SIGGRAPH once, I can, I, I can tell that that is exactly their business model. It's like, uh, yeah, we came up with this new technology, and so we needed to make a movie out of it uh, in order to justify the R&D costs. So uh, here it is. Yeah, Brave was all right. Yeah, Brave was the, all right. At the risk... At the risk of being that edgelord guy again, <laughs> <laughs> I've mentioned this before outside of the uh, oh, show. Yeah. I actually find Pixar films to be a little bit cold <laughs> <laughs> and unfeeling. Now, I can't really explain it. I just, I feel sometimes that, yeah, they, they definitely tug on the emotional strings, but... I find the characters themselves to be a little, uh... Oh, what's the word? There's not, there's not a lot of, uh... Genuine feelings there. <laughs> they, they play with all of the emotions that they're comfortable with. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Uh, at the, uh, the... Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Well, I mean, uh, and, you... and they have a Pixar movie opening, like, formula that they follow, too, right? Like... Yeah. Um, tell an idyllic story and then throw everything on its head. I'm pretty sure it's, like, the short version of it, but, um, like, let, let's give, let's put everybody in their comfort zone and then do something to make everybody feel horrible. Like, uh, that is, that is the Pixar formula right there, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I, I'm pretty sure that the cold and unfeeling world is, like, part of their mission statement. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is and and that's true, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh. Although we we were we were once going to lunch with a friend who described Mon uh, Monster University as being a uh, what was it a pile of garbage, <laughs> <laughs> and I I laid into him about it, talking about how like oh yeah like all these animators like displacing their families <laughs> and like working for years on something and oh yeah. Dog shit. Dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even, like, and I was like, I actually find, I find some Pixar movies to be a little, uh, problematic sometimes, but I would never, ever call them garbage. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 they're leading industry stuff. I mean, it, it is, uh, they're definitely guilty of doing stuff that is, um... Like, a tech demo first and a movie second. Like, they, they've done a few that are probably like that. Mm. Or a profitable first and good movie second. Yeah. Um, but there is a, a demand for quality that they adhere to pretty well. Oh, yeah. Well. I don't think that you could make a compelling argument that anything that Pixar has ever created um, was of, of lower than, like, top of industry quality. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they, they basically made the industry. Yeah, I mean, well, they, uh, you know, maybe there were quite a few other sort of 3D animation studios and things that were, like, you know, pushing the envelope of 3D animation early on, but I think that's, like, were they maybe the first feature-length -like 3D animated films? Yeah, they were, they were definitely some of... And now everybody's doing it. Like, they, everybody's... Like, they were pretty serious pioneers, because uh, when they made their first short, uh, Andre and Wally B, I don't think people considered that you could make animation of that quality in 3D. Yeah. It was actually a... Yeah, it was all, like, Mind's it, Eye and shit like that before then, so... Yeah, they, there was a... It was, it was a pretty big deal, um... Like, even if they do make a movie and that movie is just kind of a fancy tech demo, um, the stuff that they've contributed to the industry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Doubtless. Now, we are out of time, and we have been for quite a while, so we will uh, catch you guys next week um, uh, where we return to uh, Wario's Woods and uh, talk about more things.
Yeah, I mean, this is basically a podcast with really stressful puzzles. <laughs> so. Increasingly stressful. <laughs> Try increasingly stressful puzzles. <laughs> bring in a bring uh, in a guest, <laughs> uh, a guest contributor. Make them try and have a conversation while also <laughs> working their way through one of the more difficult puzzle games ever created. Yeah, no big deal. See you guys next time. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye.